Um, beta thalassemia is a genetic disorder um, that affects the beta globin gene, which is involved, which is a component of hemoglobin. So normally hemoglobin is made up of two alpha globin chains and two beta globin chains. And in beta thalassemia, there are a range of mutations where resulting in a decreased production of beta globin. And so there is an imbalance between alpha and beta globin chains, um, resulting in anemia with uh, hemolysis, increased destruction of red blood cells, but also ineffective erythropoiesis, where the bone marrow is working really hard to make red blood cells, um, but they're, the, the red blood cells are being destroyed prematurely. Um, it is a disease that's primarily found in people with ancestry around the equator. So uh, we think of the Mediterranean, Africa, Middle East, um, uh, India, um, and then uh, the Asian subcontinent, Southeast Asia. Um, and But we see it all over because of immigration. Generally, it's identified um, at six months of age, um, between six and six months of age and a year, um, when uh, young infants um, may present with failure to thrive um, and a workup irritability, less feeding, and a workup will, re will reveal uh, microcytic anemia, uh, leading to genetic testing, uh, which would confirm a diagnosis of beta thalassemia uh, major. Um, in beta thalassemia major, there, um, it's a severe form where there's either it can be a beta zero, beta zero mutation. Uh, where there's no production of the beta globin gene, or you can have a beta plus, beta zero. There are various genotypes that can lead to a significant anemia um, at a young age. Treatment has primarily been transfusion therapy, where starting at a young age, um, at, since di at diagnosis, individuals receive um, transfusions every three to four weeks. Um, and then this continues on throughout the rest of life. The goals are to, um, with transfusions comes um, iron burden. Uh, each unit of blood has about 250 to 300 milligrams of iron, and that accumulates in organs. The body doesn't have a way of getting rid of extra iron. Um, and so a major complication of transfusions is transfusional iron burden with iron in the liver, iron accumulating in the, in the heart, um, and uh, iron in endocrine organs. So that primarily leads to other complications um, that we need to monitor patients for, for starting from a very young age. Um, over the years, we've had excellent development of uh, chelators that are now available to remove um, iron uh, from the organs, including deferoxamine, deferacerox, and deferoprone. Um, and so individuals are monitored very closely. We have seen, again, just like in sickle cell, we, we have seen that individuals are doing, um, have done really well in pediatric care. So they're growing up um, to, to a, into adulthood uh, with fewer complications and survival is increasing. What we have seen is that they continue to live even longer and that's been because of the development of um, comprehensive care programs, development of drugs, the chelators, and also monitoring tools, including um, MRIs of the heart and the liver.